where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. God has hidden unlimited treasures in his word. Every time we open it, we can discover a new treasure or admire an old one. What will we find today? Let's dig in. Here's Carla Early with Treasure Hunt in the Word. If our pastor doesn't hear an amen where he thinks it ought to go, he says, this would be a good place to say amen. Then he gets several. I love that because it gets people interacting with the sermon. It wakes people up. But I got to thinking, what does the word amen mean anyway? What I found out is that it's a Hebrew word that as an interjection like we normally use it, is not translated into Greek or Latin or English or any other language that I looked at. Even the New Living Translation didn't translate it into modern English because it's still a word we use. In any Jewish or Christian meeting around the world, no matter what language it was, you could shout amen and everyone would know what you meant. Of course, you'd need to know what you're saying amen to. It means so be it or let it be when used at the end of a sentence or as an interjection. It was a custom in the synagogues and later in churches when they read the Bible or preached or prayed, people would say, Amen. Like today, it's a way of confirming what the other person was saying and making the words your own, agreeing with the other person as if you'd said it yourself. Oddly enough, though, it's used only 30 times in the Old Testament compared to 152 times in the New Testament. But here's where it gets interesting. Only 50 times in the New Testament, it's used in the way we recognize it at the end of something. Jesus himself changed the meaning of amen just a bit. I shouldn't have been surprised. After all, when Jesus gets a hold of something or someone, he changes it, right? So he started using it at the beginning of sentences. He'd say amen first. Remember all those verily I say unto you statements that Jesus made? He's really saying, Amen, I say unto you. Or in John, he says, Verily, verily. Amen, amen, I say to you. Of course, most translations say, Assuredly, or truly, I say to you, or I tell you the truth. But the original Greek says, Amen. 25 times in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, Amen, amen, before very strong statements, giving his words the force of a superlative, usually translated, most assuredly or very truly, I say to you. In prefacing his words with amen, or even a double amen, Jesus was telling his listeners, listen up, this is not only true, but it's important, shocking, even life-changing. Let's look at a few of them. Matthew 17, 20, amen, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. That was a pretty shocking truth, wasn't it? Or Matthew 18, 3, Amen, I say to you, unless you become as little children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. That was completely opposite of what the world at the time thought. Matthew 25, 40, Amen, I say to you, as you've done to the least of these, my brothers, you have done it to me. Luke 23, 43, Amen, I say to you, and he's talking to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. John 3, 3, Amen, Amen, I say to you, except a man be born again, he could not see the kingdom of God. John 5, 24, Amen, Amen, I say to you, he that hears and believes has eternal life. John 8, 58, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. John fourteen twelve. Amen, amen, I say to you, he that believes on me will do greater works than I have done. These are just a few of the examples of the way Jesus used this word. So when you read, verily, or most assuredly, or truly, I say to you, get ready for something radical, life-changing, and feel free to shout amen. You can contact us at treasurehuntintheword at gmail.com. You can listen to other episodes on our website, which you'll find in the description below. I'm Carla Early, and thanks for listening. And remember, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also.